This is a bacteria called Shiga toxin producing E. coli. The Shiga toxin producing E. coli, often referred to as STEC, is a strain of E. coli that makes a toxin called Shiga toxin. The most common form of STEC in the United States is E. coli 0157. E. coli 0157 is usually the cause of outbreaks of E. coli infections that are reported on news outlets. STEC can cause bloody diarrhea and hemolytic uremic syndrome, or HUS, which has the potential to result in kidney failure. How does STEC spread, you may ask? Well, the infection begins when a person ingests small, often invisible quantities of human or animal feces. Yummy! This can result from the consumption of contaminated food or water. The risk is high unpasteurized milk, soft cheeses, and unpasteurized apple cider. Some individuals have been infected by swallowing lake water or by petting animals in zoos. To avoid this pathogen, employees in the food industry are mandated to wash their hands before leaving the restroom. Please? You may be wondering how common STEC infections are. Approximately 265,000 people are infected annually in the United States. About 5-10% to 10 of people infected develop the potentially life-threatening hemolytic uremic syndrome, or HUS. Virtually everyone has some risk of being infected worldwide. And you might be asking, what are the origins of STEC? STEC live in the gut of animals such as cattle, which are the main source of illness for humans, sheep, deer, and elk. Symptoms of STEC include stomach cramps, bloody diarrhea, low fever, and vomiting. Most individuals recover within five to seven days. The 10% that develop HUS exhibit decreased urination, fatigue, and paleness. HUS patients often must be hospitalized because their kidneys fail. While some recover within weeks, others sadly lose their lives due to the lack of organ donors. Here we have a three-year-old patient um, who contracted the Shiga toxin producing uh, E. coli. He unfortunately suffered from kidney uh, failure and was in intensive care for two weeks and he also is suffering from gastric illness as he waits for a kidney transplant. Here is another patient who developed HUS from the E. coli patient. This patient similarly suffers from kidney complications and is on dialysis. The way to diagnose tag infections is through laboratory analysis of stool samples. Generally, if you have bloody diarrhea for more than three days along with vomiting and or fever, you should contact your doctor. The incubation period of the infection is generally three days after exposure. Then cramps and diarrhea worsen with the recovery usually occurring between seven and ten days after exposure. If HUS develops, its onset often occurs at the seven day mark after exposure. I am a special guest speaker on this PSA. A key therapy for the STEC infection is hydration. Antibiotics should not be used to treat the infection because they could increase the risk of developing HUS. Similarly, antidiarrheal agents could also increase that risk. School and work exclusion regulations differ by jurisdiction. Finally, how do we prevent the incidence of STEC infections? People should wash their hands after using the bathroom, changing diapers, and touching animals in all their environment, even in zoos. Additionally, food should be thoroughly cooked before consumption. Avoid swallowing water when swimming in natural bodies of water.